What's, What's up, explorers? explorers? Welcome back to our channel where the choose here from Choose to Explore, where we teach you guys how to see the world and save a dollar. So, we just came back from an amazing trip to Belize, and it was a lot more than we expected. After finishing this trip, we officially have visited every single country in Central America. Let me say that again. We went to every single country in Central America, and we have vlogs on those experiences that you can see linked below in the description. But today this video is all about Belize and we're going to give you 17 things that you should know before you go to Belize. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss this one. So to get this started, one question I get asked more than anything else is where should I travel? What's a great beginner travel destination? And to be honest, Belize is an amazing travel destination, especially for beginners or solo travelers. So to answer that question on what makes Belize such a beginner friendly travel destination and solo travel destination. It's really because as an American, it's not a far flight, they speak English, they accept US dollars, and it's not that expensive. All things that make it super easy to navigate on your first trip abroad. In that same standpoint, Belize is a country in Central America, but it is significantly different than a lot of its other counterparts in Central America. And this is because it actually was colonized by the British versus the rest of Central America, which was colonized by the Spanish. So that's why they speak English. And this ties into our second point that Belize is the most diverse country in Central America from what we experienced. So there's many different groups in Belize. So you have Europeans there, you have the Mayan people there, you have the Garifunas, which we'll talk about later, you have the Africans, and it's super diverse. And you can see that even through their foods and the customs and the cultures in the country. And you can even see that diversity through the flag of Belize. So on the Belizean flag, you have the blue background, and there's two men on the crest. One is a mestizo and the other is of African heritage and they are holding lumber. And this dates back to the history of being a strong lumber industry. And you also can see the strong African heritage with the Garifunas, which we also saw when we went to Honduras, right? Honduras, yes. And we also had a really great experience at the black and white experience in um, Belize, which you can see in our full Belize vlog. So check that out as well. And we highly recommend eating at the black and white Garifuna Center in San Pedro. So every time we vacation in a new country, we try to do our due diligence and learn as much of the country as possible before we get there. Belize was no exception. And one thing that we did see is a lot of people talked about crime and their safety in Belize. So we spent two days on the mainland and the rest of our time on the islands. And during our stay, we did not feel unsafe during any period of time on our trip. Yeah, so we just really looked alive. We didn't have any flashy belongings. And we also always made sure we looked like we knew where we were going at all times. So we had a good time. We didn't have any bad experiences while we were there. One thing that could have helped us is being black people and traveling abroad. A lot of times we stick out, but in Belize, because it's so diverse and there is a high African population, we kind of blended in. I mean, obviously we are tourists, but we blended in a lot more than we usually do. All right, so now we're gonna touch on where you should stay in Belize. So there's really two options. Either you can stay in the mainland of Belize or you can travel to one of the islands. So we actually did both. And I highly recommend if you can during your trip to do a mix of both. This way you can get more of a local life as well as enjoy the islands as well. So the mainland is a lot different than the islands. So we'll start there. So almost every international flight is going to fly into Belize city, which is the capital. Even if you plan to go to the islands, you still more than likely will fly into Belize city. So during our first two days in the mainland, we rented a car and we drove around. So here we saw waterfalls, we did some hikes, we saw some pools, we went to some Mayan ruins. We did so much here on the mainland. And this is why I say you should visit the mainland as well. But if you're more of a relaxation traveler, the islands may be more your pace. So if you go to the islands, you'll be around a lot more tourists. You'll have the opportunity for boat rides, snorkeling, scuba diving, beautiful beaches, and amazing resorts. And you can check out all of our top recommended places to stay in our Explore Belize travel guide that's linked below. So this ties perfectly into our next point in that Belize city, it seems like the taxis are pretty much fixed prices. So when we went back to the airport and we had to take a taxi to the ferry terminal, it seemed like everybody had the exact same price. You can try to negotiate, but what we found for the four of us, it was us two and two of our friends, it was pretty fixed at $35 total for the four of us. So it can be beneficial to try to negotiate, but from our experience, they originally started at 40 and I kept talking them down and after a long time, I got it down to 35. 
if you find it worth it to save the five dollars you could try to do that but it seems like forty dollars is pretty standard so if you are staying in the mainland and you are planning to go to the islands there's really two ways that you can do that the first way is by taking an airplane and the second way is by taking a boat because obviously it's an island but it's not just any plane it's a really small tiny plane <laughs> <laughs> so if you do decide to take the direct flight from Belize City to San Pedro there's two companies that fly that route it's Mayan Island Air and Tropic Air so a lot of people say that the highlight of their trip is the flight to San Pedro it has amazing views and it's a lot quicker to fly than take the ferry it's only about a 15 minute flight if that but it's a little bit more expensive and it's a tiny plane. So if you've never flown in a tiny plane, it can be a little bit scary because literally every bit of turbulence you feel. But I also did hear that some people had the experience where they could ride up front to where you could even sit next to the captain and have an amazing experience up there as well. I'm not gonna lie, that really scares me. <laughs> so <laughs> we opted for the ferry. <laughs> So the ferry was a great option to us because number one, it's a cheaper option. It's a little bit slower being like an hour to an hour and a half, but it was an hour. It wasn't too bad. So the ferries leave way more often and there's two different companies that you can go and purchase tickets from. We opted for the Caribbean Sprinter, which is the fastest water taxi of the two. And the other option is Belize Express and we did find it to be a little bit more expensive than the Caribbean Sprinter. We also found that if you get the ticket round trip with Caribbean Sprinter, it's actually cheaper than getting two one ways. So definitely get the round trip ticket. Before we went, we heard some feedback that the ferry could be a little bit choppy and rocky, but we didn't experience that during our two trips on the ferry. It was actually pretty smooth and I even got to ride up top and I got beautiful views up there as well. One thing that kind of concerned me with Caribbean Sprinter is when it was time to book, they actually made us select our time and we didn't really know what time we were going to be there. But actually the day before your ferry, they'll send you another confirmation email and at that time you can confirm your time for sure. So when you're booking, don't worry about what time you select, as long as you're selecting the correct day. So now that you know how to get to the islands, let's talk about where you're going to stay. We highly recommend staying at Mahogany Bay. So during our entire stay in San Pedro, we stayed at the Mahogany Bay. And this is a curio collection from the Hilton property. I love the Mahogany Bay for many reasons. Number one is that it's outside of the downtown area. So the downtown area can be really crowded and congested with people, but Mahogany Bay is maybe like a 10 minute ride away from the city in the heart of everything else. So it's more secluded, but just close enough. The next thing that I love about the Mahogany Bay is that it has its own private beach. And during our stay, I'm gonna be honest, I thought it was the nicest beach that we visited in Belize. And that beach is only accessible if you are staying at the Mahogany Bay. And during our time there, there weren't a lot of people there. And also at the beach, they give you access to free kayaks and paddle boards, and there even is a restaurant there. Also, what I really liked about Mahogany Bay is that it wasn't like just a nice hotel or resort. It felt more like a community that you were in. You pretty much stayed in like a whole house to yourself and it just was so comfortable to stay there. So this accommodation is perfect if you are in a group like we were or if you are just two people or even a single person. So during our stay, we actually stayed in two different accommodations at the Mahogany Bay. The first place was a three bedroom townhouse and the second place we got upgraded to one of the new villas and it even had its own plunge pool for my queen's birthday. It was phenomenal there. And if you don't want to venture out, it has everything that you need right there. So they have a large pool, they have multiple restaurants, they have different food shacks, they had a coffee shop that gave you free coffee in the morning, I love that. Uh, they also have a spa, and it's just so many nice amenities, it's a perfect vacation. And we also have a whole video dedicated entirely to the Mahogany Bay that you can see linked below in the description as well. Alright, so you're at the islands, you got your accommodation, the next thing you need to know is how you're going to get around. So in San Pedro, it's a little different than any island that I've been on because there's not a lot of cars, there's not a lot of bikes, but there's a ton of golf carts. And let me say this, not all golf carts are created equal. We actually got our golf carts through Avis Cart Rental and I will say these golf carts were far better than any golf carts that we saw during our time in San Pedro. They were newer, they ran very smooth, and they came in cute colors. But one of the best things for us is to get to one of the secret beaches in the northern part of the island, you have to pay a toll. But because of the golf cart rental company, we actually didn't have to pay for the toll. And that's a special perk for booking with Avis golf cart rentals. And they were really fairly priced. They were cheaper than a lot of the other companies that we saw. 
The next point we're going to talk about is the currency in Belize. So I'm not sure if the Belizean dollar is backed by the US dollar, but during our time, it was two Belizean dollars to one US dollar. So it made it really easy to do things because I didn't have to do math like 7.5 to one or uh, 1046 to one. Like literally it was two to one, which was super easy for me. But you just have to keep in mind that some prices are listed in Belizean dollars. So you need to ask, is this Belizean dollars or is this USD? So you don't end up paying double. Be sure to ask before you get the bill. <laughs> <laughs> before you pay at least. A lot of places did take the US dollar, but it's good to have the local currency as well. And on to our next point, which is, do you need cash or do you need your card? Honestly, it's a good mix of both. For majority of our spending, we did use on our card, but one thing to note is that Visa and MasterCard are the way to go when you're traveling throughout Belize. From our experience, we did carry our Amex and there were very few places that we saw that did actually take Amex. But it's super important to get a card that has no foreign transaction fees. And even if you do take money out of the ATM with a debit card, to get a debit card that has no foreign transaction fees. We use the Charles Schwab card and we highly recommend that card as well to have no foreign transaction fees and to get the local currency from the ATM. But we also did experience some food cards and some local restaurants who did not take card. So just be sure to have cash ready, whether that's Belizean dollars or the USD. So now we're going to talk about snorkeling and marine life. So Belize is said to have some of the best snorkeling in the world. It actually has the biggest living, living <laughs> barrier reef in the world. So Australia technically does have the biggest great barrier reef in the world, but Belizeans were really particular and specific about saying it's the biggest living <laughs> barrier reef in the world. That's right. So having a beautiful living reef is fantastic for snorkeling and seeing marine life. There actually are a lot of protected zones where you can't even fish. So what that means is that the marine life is in abundance. And that really makes for an exceptional snorkeling experience, like the one that we had with Excite Belize. So we actually did a full day tour with Excite Belize, and you can actually see that video linked below in the description. But what we did during that trip was we actually went to Keek Hawker, we went to Hold Chan Marine Reserve, and the highlight for me, maybe not for her, but for me, <laughs> was I actually got to snorkel with sharks, and there were so many sharks. What an amazing bucket list experience for myself, and for any of my adventure goers as well. So another reason why people go to Belize is I hear that the diving here is some of the most beautiful dives in the world. Belize is actually well known for the Great Blue Hole. You can actually charter a flight with Tropic Air and you can see those views from above and it is spectacular. It just looks like a great hole in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> a great blue hole. <laughs> it is literally as it is called. <laughs> but after speaking with a lot of people who scuba dive through the Great Blue Hole, they told me that it's way better seeing it from above than it is actually being in it. And that's because it's super dark down there and not a lot of visibility. They said it was more like just checking off the box that they did it, more so than having one of the best diving experiences that they ever had. But you can go see for yourself and let me know below what you guys thought about your diving experience at the Great Blue Hole. So now we're going to go over lifestyle in Belize. So like we said, we visited Belize City, Ambergris Key, and Key Calgar. So first off, in Belize City, everyone was driving cars, so it's a little bit more fast-paced. In San Pedro and Ambergris Key, everyone was on golf carts, so a little bit slower. But then once you hit Key Calker, their motto is go slow, and they mean it. We didn't even see golf carts. Everyone was just on foot. And it's a lot smaller island, and everything was laid back, and this is a perfect place to go and just relax. And our next point is about food in Belize. And one thing that I did find, compared to the United States, food in Belize is very inexpensive. Even if you go to some of the high-end restaurants, it's still cheaper than going to high-end restaurants in the United States. In Belize, you'll find a lot of amazing restaurants where you can find great lobster, and I mean grilled buttery lobster, at an affordable price as well. So while going out to eat was not that expensive, one thing that did surprise me is when we went to the grocery store and we saw the prices. In our experience, and we went to about two or three different grocery stores, it was a lot more expensive than actually going to a restaurant and getting food there. So we have a ton of top recommendations for restaurants in our Explore Belize guide that's also linked in the description below. Check that out, guys. <laughs> so as you know, we've been to many places all around the world, and 
let me tell you, Belize is like no other with the mosquitoes. They tore us up all hours of the night, all hours of the day. We had a lot of, you know, coconut oil on, we had our bug spray on, and they didn't care. They did not care. <laughs> These mosquitoes were disrespectful and they knew it. <laughs> Ate us up. One thing that also was different to me at least is the sun here in Belize. I typically wear a hat and while I do try my best to wear sunscreen, this is the first place that I went where my actual forehead was peeling days after. I've never had that happen before. So these mosquitoes in the sun is definitely different here in Belize. I don't know if it's scientific, but from my experience, it's definitely different. So our next point is about the Mayan ruins here in Belize. So when people think about the Mayan empire, many people don't think about Belize. But on our visit, we made sure to visit the closest Mayan ruins to Belize city. And while we were at Altunha, we actually saw the largest jade head in Central America. It was truly beautiful to see, but one thing to note is there's not a lot of shade during these Mayan ruins. There's no shade. <laughs> <laughs> so my next point is about drones in San Pedro. So being that San Pedro is a small island and literally the airport is right outside of the city, you'll find very few places in San Pedro where you can actually fly your drone. So our next point that you need to know about is how amazing the hot sauce is in Belize. So they have it on every single table at the restaurants and we took like four bottles home back with us. Normally we are team carry on, but for this one trip, I wish that we were checked bags because I wanted to take a full size bottle home. I love hot sauce. I love flavorful hot sauce, especially ones that is not just hot. It actually has flavor. And if you guys go to Belize, be sure to try the hot sauce and take some back. And if you guys do take more than that please ship some to the choose <laughs> and our last and final tip is about the drinking age in Belize so the drinking age is actually 18 so come here and enjoy a brew try some of the local beer try a Belican and even try some of the local rums and just go to Belize relax and have an amazing time here and drink responsibly <laughs> And there you guys have it. That's 17 things to know before you go to Belize. Thank you guys so much for checking out our channel. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. You guys could be anywhere in the world, but you're here with the truths, and we truly appreciate that. So we'll see you guys on the next one.